this 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12 connected to a twin clutch 7 speed automatic gearbox, putting it into sport and importantly while we're in Britain, bumpy road mode because our B roads are well, B might as well stand for bumpy. <laughs> Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. I am in fact in the back seat of a stationary car. Why is that? Well, today we are beginning the journey of searching for my new daily driver. And the back seat to me has all of a sudden become relatively important over the last 16 months because that is how old my son is. <laughs> so I have never shopped for a car taking into consideration the practicality of the back seats or the proposition that it may or may not have Isofix. So, as part of this journey, we're gonna be driving Ferrari, we're gonna be driving Bentley, Porsche, Aston Martin, Audi. I'm sure you can guess which cars from there might constitute a daily driver. Now, you might be looking at this saying, hold on a minute, you're considering a V12 Ferrari as your daily driver. Now, I will preface this with, we will still have the family McCann. However, uh, I would like something a little bit spicy, a little bit exciting that I can use on the daily, but also take the full family out in uh, for a bit of excitement on a sunny afternoon such as this. And we're starting right here with the V12 Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. There is a V8 available, but we don't talk about that one. So, back to the bunker, update on that coming soon, but first, let me share how you could potentially get your hands on one of those. Whew, that thing is hot. So, I have teamed up with Omaze, link below, omaze.com forward slash Mr. JWW. Now, this is for your opportunity to potentially win a V12 GTC4 Lusso, just like this one, not this actual one, and $20,000. Now, I don't know about you, but if I got my hands on a Lusso and $20,000, I'd probably end up touring Europe on a grand road trip, making sure that I stopped by all of the fantastic hotels and restaurants along the way. It's all about making memories after all. But importantly, the reason why I've teamed up with Omaze, and this is where it really becomes close to my heart, is that it's all in support of a charity called the Race Day Foundation. Now let's not pretend it's pretty tough out there right now, and this charity pulled up my heartstrings because it directly involved cars. So the foundation is dedicated to offering uniquely empowering race day experiences to a diverse group of families coping with all forms of life-changing illnesses. The Race Day Foundation has been hosting families and children at racetracks since 2008. Now, if you've been following this channel for more than five minutes, you know I'm all about cars and cars more than anything put a big smile on my face. So I know how empowering being in an environment full of great cars on a racetrack can be. And that's what the uh, Race Day Foundation is all about. So for your chance to potentially win a GTC4 Lusso, V12 and 20 grand, uh, be sure to hit the link below enter, you can donate and support this fantastic cause and also be in with a chance to win a remarkable car. Speaking of which, let's just run over some of the facts and figures surrounding this vehicle. Let's just quickly start with the inside and this gorgeous infotainment system. This is a 10.25 inch high definition touchscreen. So it incorporates as well 3D maps and Apple CarPlay. One great feature of this big touchscreen is the fact that you can split it and share it with other applications. So we're in nav right now, but if I wanted to split it and share it with the phone screen, for example, it splits it down there. So I could still interact with the phone, still keep nav going, 
and therefore you don't have to compromise your multitasking. And then onto the whole purpose of this car really, which is the back seats. Now what's great is these are almost bucket seats. They are sort of sports seats, luxurious leather, um, and having sat in the back earlier, they hug you like, like your own body glove. They are absolutely gorgeous. There are also five different driver modes, snow, wet, comfort, sport, and ESC off, all of which I shall go through when we're driving the car shortly. But just while I come around to the rear, let's discuss this colossal diffuser. So despite the fact that this is a practical Ferrari, uh, that is one of the largest and most aggressive diffusers on any production car that I think I've laid eyes on. And the whole purpose of it is to, is to ensure stability of the car at higher speeds. But it also adds stunning sculpture. Look at it, it looks so aggressive from the back. It also houses the exhaust tips that ultimately scream out that V12 symphony. Have a look at the engine. I've popped the bonnet. Just lift this up. There it is, 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12. This will push the car to a top speed of 208 miles an hour, not to 60 in 3.4 seconds. And it has one of the finest sounds that I've ever heard in a car with four seats. It's incredible. This is starting at the top because a well spec one of these is coming in around about £300,000, sir. Now, that's not to say that if I was to buy one of these, I would be going anywhere near that. Thankfully, pre owned values of these are practically half that, which is convenient. The delectable, sonorous, mildly ostentatious exhaust tone. Listen to this. This for me is effectively an 812 Superfast with four seats. I mean, dynamically, not so much. It's a bit heavier, but it's still, this thing does not hang around. Ultimately, this four-seater, four-wheel drive family car will push over 200 miles an hour. It will go on to push 208 miles an hour with four seats and four-wheel drive. Now, they have taken the learnings from cars like the F12 TDF and applied rear wheel steering to this car. This is one of the first generation of Ferraris to utilize their next generation of rear wheel steer. And as a result, the agility of it is sublime. But the one thing for me that makes this a true Ferrari, I mean a Ferrari through and through, is the relationship between the engine and the gearbox, the transmission. It's just out of this world. Just, just, just listen for one second. Check this out. It's absolutely outstanding. And I think that is the magic of this car. While you can dial it down and put it into comfort, and there's literally a comfort mode in this car, you can also then press the bumpy road mode, which does an incredible job of ironing out the trials and tribulations that the suspension has to deal with on your challenging back roads. And you can just chill, put it into auto. There's literally an auto button down here. And then all of a sudden, it becomes a bona fide, relaxed, automatic cruiser with a big boot, four seats. And the, and I'm not sure about this, but this has to be one of the industry's largest panoramic roofs. The glass is practically front to rear. It is colossal, and it allows so much light to cascade inside this interior, which is already specced in a very light crema theme, and it makes it feel so incredibly spacious. I love it. So of course 
with four-wheel drive comes four-wheel traction, allowing this car to use all 690 horsepower, 514 pounds-feet of torque, apply all of that traction through its sticky tyres and four-wheel drive and propel this thing, don't forget, with four seats, kid in the back, mother-in-law if you want, down the road, zero to 62 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds. 3.4 seconds. Don't forget, with the practicality and luxury, you're inside this thing. It's so refined. And once again, just thinking back to my time driving a, a Ferrari FF, despite the fact that this is ultimately a, a fairly substantial facelift, what they've done to enhance and engage the feeling of quality once you're inside it is worlds apart. It's just, it almost feels like it's from a different brand the way that they've moved the game on. Now, if you do find yourself fortunate enough to be a passenger in this car, um, there is also the optional passenger display screen. Now, what's fantastic about that is, it's probably the most engaging passenger seat of any car I could think of, because it allows the passenger to become DJ. That might become slightly irritating for the driver, particularly if you're listening to your favourite song and the passenger decides it's not their favourite song. They all of a sudden have the ability to control navigation, volume, to flick through options to, to check out how fast you're going and even control the stereo. Now while we do find ourselves conveniently amongst some glorious British sunshine, there are five driver modes down here. Uh, let's start from the bottom, which is snow. Uh, snow mode. Actually, this is probably the most sedate uh, setting of the car because it doesn't even allow you to adjust the damper settings using the bumpy road mode here uh, because it just assumes everything needs to be supple and soft. So once it's in snow, it's pretty chilled. Uh, traction control is obviously dialed up to the max. And once it detects any slip, as you might do in snow and ice, it has a very clever ECU, which uh, conveniently allocates uh, torque to each individual wheel to allow you for the most traction given your traction circumstances, or in this mode, lack of traction circumstances. Then we take it up a notch, uh, we can go into wet, and I think actually wet is a similar situation in that the damper settings are no longer uh, individually configurable uh, once in wet mode. Once again in wet you need the car to squat a little bit under acceleration to find a bit more traction and therefore there's no need to stiffen it up. But once again that does uh, recalibrate the ECU somewhat and the traction control settings and adjusts four-wheel drive uh, and slip angle of the car accordingly to do with the fact that you're driving in the wet. And then we go up to what is uniquely called comfort mode within a Ferrari, because Ferrari of old and in fact going forward, even for example in the uh, Grand Tour that is the 812 Superfast, there is no comfort mode, it's sport and then race. Now in this, sport has been replaced with comfort, comfort you'll use as your daily driver setting, you put it in auto, it's sporty enough, you can independently configure the damper settings here, as spoken about earlier, but then if you find yourself on a road like this, knocking it up to the fourth setting, which is sport, and that's where you might want to also take it out of auto using the uh, control column down here, and then you can control the gears as and when you want them, and get make lovely noises, <laughs> like this. What a sound! But don't forget as well, this car is running carbon ceramic brakes. The modulation of the brake pedal feels very reassuring. There's a huge amount of confidence inspiring pressure to lean back on those carbon ceramics. And then your fifth and final setting, which is ESC off. Now in this mode, you actually have to hold it over to the right for a few seconds, and then it beeps at you like that to let you know that you might not be as talented as you think you are, so just be careful. That's what, that's what those three beeps essentially mean. Don't be a moron because the traction control has left the building and you're on your own. Probably not something you want to do when you should otherwise be all the way down in wet mode. Anyway, there's those features. ESC off just allows you to play with the car a lot more. Now, because this has a very clever four-wheel drive system, the majority of the time the power is actually driven to the rear wheels. So when you are in ESC off, when you do find yourself in a scenario where you can legitimately and safely play with the car, ESC off still allows you to get the back end out and make big skids. <laughs> oh, 
that talk, that talk is sensational. So yes, here we have it, episode one of finding a new, but exciting, daily driver. Now as a spot of context, I have been daily driving a GT3. <laughs> so really going to pretty much anything will provide a lot more refinement and luxury as beautifully built as that car is. It's very much a sort of track biased road car. It's very hardcore, sounds incredible. And I just want something now which is gonna sort of take the edge off those longer journeys and starting here with this amazing interior. Honestly, this is one of the most beautiful driving experiences in terms of luxury and just grand tour of wafting that I've had in quite some time. So it would be awesome uh, to hear from you what other options you would consider as a sort of luxury but sport. It still has to be exciting, uh, but with that preface that it needs to be used daily. So let's see. Let's see where this adventure goes. This is day one. I think we're starting at the top, but still there are some pretty spicy alternatives to come, uh, which I'm very excited to share with you soon. But as always, I love hearing from you. Let me know uh, in the comments below if you've got any questions, thoughts, or ideas. And be sure to check out the link below to enter the Omaze competition. It's omaze.com, O-M-A-Z-E.com forward slash Mr. J-W-W. Be sure to enter. I can't wait to see who comes out with a GTC for Luxo. As always, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time. Ciao.